super yacht, a super yacht captain, and a super yacht. I'm fascinated with those because those are like a hotel on water. And uh, we're going to talk to Captain Sandy. Captain Sandy, what is happening? Hi, thank you for having me. Oh, okay. So uh, I want to dive back a little bit and see. I've, I've watched the show that, that you've been on the Below Deck show and watched that and kind of see. And so, what I'm curious, the curiosity that got me was at, at what point growing up or, or your background where you was like, man, captain in boats, driving boats, that's where I want to be? You know, it's so far from how I grew up. I actually grew up on a ranch. And we had horses and cows and pigs and lots of animals. My dad was a hunter. We had 42 uh, dogs and we always had a bass boat. So we grew up water skiing um, and I answered an ad in the paper one day, got a job on a boat and started that trek and thought, wow, I can make money at the same time I'm getting a suntan and a workout. <laughs> I thought that was pretty cool working on the water. And, and it, it looks interesting. So did you start, so I guess you start on smaller boats and then kind of worked towards it. How, how do you become, how do you become a captain? I know there's like a licensing thing and stuff like that. So how does, how do you do that? Well, I started on small boats, washing them, taking, maintaining them. And then I got a job for a guy who gave me the opportunity to learn, which was, you know, if you're, if you don't have that opportunity, opportunity to learn, how are you going to learn? Mm -hmm. Right. And the TV show is actually showing millions of people that there's jobs in the industry, which I had no idea. I just answered an ad in paper years ago. Um, it's pretty cool. The money's good. Sorry about the dog barking. <laughs> uh, little bear, no. Um, the money's great. And um, the cool thing is, is I started a charity, uh, founded a charity, and we have created an in-school curriculum, which will educate kids in school and let them know about the maritime industry. And it's something that I didn't seek. I had no idea it existed. And when I found it, it was like, oh my gosh, I can earn money in this industry. It was pretty awesome. Yeah, and, and it's and it's uh God, it's so it's so interesting watching the show. I know that it's it's, it's for T V and they, they do you know, some things happen to kinda help with the T V, but how how much uh you know, involved from what, what you see on on T V to what is going on, is that are you, they're out there for you're out there what for a week or so and they've condensed that down to that's correct we're out there for six weeks and uh there's a lot of footage um everything that you see actually happened no one produces us it's a real job they really act like that and i think um it's the pressure it's like a pressure cooker right so you're in this little it's a big tube on the water <laughs> you know but we're still it's like small living quarters for people they work, they wake up, they eat breakfast together, they work all day, they have lunch and dinner, and uh, it's always, it's like a family at sea with all the drama, <laughs> just like at home. Yeah. You fight with your brothers and sisters or your parents, it's the same thing. The only difference is it's a real job, we are responsible for lives at sea, and you know, you just gotta keep them on that track. Uh, when they start to lose it, I just say, go count your cash under your pillow, that's why you're here. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, and and you've been at it. For, you've been at this for a while, and, and you've been fairly successful. You know, you were, you won the distinguished uh, crew award. Uh, you had the fire. You had the pirates. I, I watched that. I watched that episode. You talked about that. So I was like, what happened? So what what happened with the fire? And then what happened with the pirates? Well, you know, um, pirates are thieves at sea, so they're everywhere. Uh, not just in the Red Sea. Um, they're in the. They're everywhere. Caribbean and. Um, I was uh, transporting a boat uh, for an owner in Dubai, and uh, on the way, our boat caught on fire. At the time, Yemen was in a civil war. Um, there had been a lot of pirate attacks. Uh, the year prior, the USS Cole was attacked. It was an election year, so it was like polarizing, and uh, we had security on board. He was getting intel. <laughs> he kept informing me, and I was like, listen. All you're doing is stressing me out. When the pirates are off the bow of the boat, let me know that. That's right. the time to tell me, not, you know, build me up. Yeah. So we had the fire. The cool thing is, is that when you're on a boat, you train, train, train. We do fire drills, man overboard drills. We never stop training. So we're prepared. Uh, we handled it really well. Um, it was the calm in the middle of the storm. 
Uh, we did not get, uh, you know, no pirates boarded us, but we called a warship because there's a coalition of warships after September 11th that monitor those bodies of water. I heard warship 68. I called that warship. It rescued us, took us into Hadida, Yemen, uh, where I spent 13 days um, wondering if we were going to get, you know, taken. So oh, the good news is, is we didn't, and uh, we made it out alive. Golly, that's that sounds that sounds insane. <laughs> yeah, it was it was stressful. So now you've you've been on the boat for a while. You've done that for a while, and now you're you know you're going on to speaking engagements. You got the book out. How did the book how did the book come to be? Be be the calm or be the storm. You know. Um, the book came from the fans. Uh, they watch the show. They go, oh, we love your leadership uh, skills. And I just think, what leadership skills? All I do is treat people how I would like to be treated. That's all I do. I always think that when I have to let someone go, they already feel bad. Why would I make them feel worse? Um, I come I come from the human element side. And we're actually taught that in C-School. We have to take a class. I think it's called, um, what do they call it today in the corporate world? D-E-N-I. Uh, so we take it's called human elements called mm -hmm. health and we take that class because we have to learn how to treat others we have to learn that when you're at sea these are your people that are going to put you know they're going to be in your lifeboat so you don't want them you know <laughs> putting a hole in your lifeboat you yeah. want them to help you paddle the lifeboat and uh it's just about leadership the book is great i'm very proud of it it was the hardest thing i ever did in my life to sit down i had a collaborator because i am not a writer who grilled me daily and um just talking about my life sea stories and you know i come from a long line of addiction in my family so i struggled with that i got sober at the age of 25 and it's like my life has been aligned for me when you do the next right thing in life things just come your way you know what when you're when you're just out there you know and it's about you know me 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 it's not like that in life. It's all about giving back, um, taking care of yourself, mind, body, and spirit. And um, that's what I try to do on a daily basis. It is not easy. It takes work and perseverance. And just like today, my sister came to visit. My birthday's tomorrow. She's from Florida. She wanted to see Red Rocks, but to get to the top of Red Rocks, <laughs> it is a hike. So she was like ready to turn around. And I'm like, it's worth the climb. You know, don't come this far and then give up. Continue on your climb, but take rest along the way. Right. Recharge your batteries. And so basically the book is about that. Okay. And so the, I guess the book, it's on Amazon. Uh, on Amazon, yes. Yeah, so you can get it everywhere. anywhere. Um, okay. Yeah. Okay. And one of the questions I've got for that boat, when you're docking that boat, does the boat go sideways? Does it have a does it have a setting to where once you roll up you can float Wish. sideways, or do you have to <laughs> yeah. manually turn that thing? I have to make it move sideways. Um, you know, we don't have a stern thruster. We just have two engines and a bow thruster. Half the time the bow thruster doesn't work properly, so you're really struggling. The reality is, is you're only good as your team when it's docking, when you're docking, because I don't have eyes in the back of my head. Mm -hmm. I can't see. There's, you know, it's a 190-foot boat. I'm, you know, probably 45 feet in, and you can't see behind you, so you have to trust your people. And, again, it's like investing in your team so your team have your back. And um, so far, so good. I mean, I, you know, I haven't damaged it. That's the good God, news. I've, I've, I, watch, I watch so much. I've tried to, I'm trying to figure out how to – because – my boat's tiny. It's 30 foot. It's a little 30 foot regal. That's not tiny. And that's not tiny. And I've, I've done crash into the dock, knocked the hole in the side of it because that, my, the boats, previous boats okay. I had before that were smaller boats and they were easy to maneuver. But in the, in the docks, I just, I just fight with it all the time. So I've been watching every time y'all get ready to dock and y'all are sitting, I'm watching where they're going, what they're doing, how they up, back, what's happening. See, but the difference is, your boat's a lot lighter, so it's more affected by wind and current, whereas our boat's a lot heavier. Yes, if you have a big wind, it starts the momentum, mm -hmm. it can work against you. Also, I have a team. We prepare before we go into the dock. So we always talk about our approach, what my expectation is. We always have that conversation. They ask me what side fenders are on, where are we going on the, you know, in the marina, so it's all about communication and prepare, you know, preparing for docking. 
and practice. You know, we practice together. Just like if you watch the beginning of our season, we're not as smooth as we are three or four charters in. It comes with practice. And that's what I need. I need, I need a lot more practice. But this watching this show, I, I, I don't know. I, I watched, I think, the, the Mediterranean seasons, and then I was like, well, what is this? I started watching from season one. I think I'm like season seven or eight of the original thing. And it's just it's entertaining. I'm learning stuff. And then, the you know, the, the crew makes it uh, even even better when they decide to go out and, and uh, have dinner. Yes. I'm glad I'm not at those dinners. That's all I got to say. I just, what I, I just I just I wonder is you know a lot of the a lot of the people that is on the cast with you when when the show airs the show comes out they watch that back and go oh my god I cannot believe I did that I'm sure they do <laughs> I mean the reality is that you forget the cameras are there because of the fourth wall they yeah. teach us not talk to the cameramen mm-hmm. and women so we they'll get in trouble so we you know we don't want to get them in trouble so we have that fourth wall yeah and yeah. people forget so they drink a little and they start <laughs> behaving <laughs> a certain way and then they yeah. watch and go oh lord well maybe I'm, i shouldn't drink too much i'm like don't don't you realize in your bunk that you see the camera right there watch i mean it's right there yeah but, yeah God, i think we've got it we've got a picture of the book we've got a picture of that book over there on there let's find yeah, this I have a book. oh yes awesome yeah. thank you thanks for that yeah, so right there. Go to, yeah, go anywhere and buy it. Amazon has it on sale right now. The uh, Kindle's on sale. They're they're all on sale. Now the uh, the youth thing you were talking about earlier is that can that be found on your website as well for the foundation? Yeah. So here's the plan. Uh, the wonderful thing. I'm in the state of Florida. Um, they funded this entire program, so it's going to roll out in Florida first. And my goal is to roll this out in every state across America because there, I wasn't college bound. I got kicked out of 11th grade. I was on that merry-go-round. The maritime industry said, hey, we'll take you <laughs> when everyone else said no. Yeah. And uh, it's just, if you're committed and it's hard work, but it's like a feel good work. Yes, you have your days where it's challenging and you have some clients or owners that aren't so wonderful to work for. <laughs> But if you keep your eye on the goal, it's a great career. And we're 50,000 people short in our industry. We hmm. need 50 more thousand people. You work in a shipyard, electric- electricians, plumbers, carpenters, welders make 20% more than they do, uh, you know, on a typical employment. Huh. Yeah, I, I, I never think about that. And, and you think about you know, like the people that work out in this oil rigs out on the sea, you know, out on the oceans and stuff like that, being in the, in the ocean, and you never really think that much. And then that got me thinking when I was watching this about the the deck hands and the you know and your, and your stewards and all that stuff. That it's it's a rotating, you know, it's a rotating in, employment thing where you get different people. So when when you have that on those ships, do you get to pick who comes on your crew, or do they just that you just randomly so, get stuck with whoever. Yeah, good question. I get to pick crew when I'm not on the show. <laughs> As you, you see the casting calls. They do cast for crew. They cast for, you know, but, you know, the clients pay. Um, the crew have, and it's usually crew that really never worked on boats before, which I love because you get, you get to give them the opportunity to see if they really want to work in this industry. And some people stay and some people go. Yeah. Some people transition into yacht sales, like Bobby. Bobby's in yacht sales now. Um, you know, Bugsy's on her. Uh, you know, Bugsy's is still uh, working on boats. Malia is her track is to be captain. Mm-hmm. Uh, Max, uh, from my first season, is a first officer on a boat in Spain. Uh, Wes has a big license now, and Joao is now a captain on a forty meter. Mm. So these people, they, you know. Our show gives that opportunity for people to yeah. advance. Um, if you're there for TV, it's not going to work. Uh, be there to do the job yeah. and, you know, cast for the show. Yeah. But more importantly, you don't have to be from a state that's surrounded by water. You can be from Colorado or any other place, Wyoming, wherever, Austin, and you can work on a boat because all it takes is one class. It's called STCW. Go to Maritime Professional Training. That's where I went to school. It's in Fort Lauderdale. The, it, that class costs about $900 for the week. 
once you have that certificate, you need to pass a physical and a drug test. Um, and then you're at sea. Huh. But there are other jobs that are land-based. If you don't want to, you have a family, mm -hmm. you might have to relocate near the shipyard or in sales or charter broker. There's so many positions. Hmm. It's wonderful. Yeah, and I, I've never, I've never thought about that at all. And then watching this, it, it picks measure. I, I even look at, even watching the show, I'm thinking, man, if this was 20 years ago, I'd mind trying to be a deckhand or something just to get out and yeah. and try it and, and see how it goes. Yeah, but, pretty awesome. So how's how's the book tour? How's the book tour been going? You've had book signings and, Good and some I, speakings. You know, honestly, uh, great. A uh, Detroit boat show brought me in. Um, sold a lot of books there. Met a lot of people. I just did the Miami boat show. Um, I, I'm running out of steam. Uh, I need a little break. Uh, yeah. so I'm not doing the Palm beach boat show, but I am doing a women's expo in Jacksonville. Okay. Um, it's in March. I think it's like the 15th or six, 16th and 17th of March in Jacksonville, Okay. uh, which is really cool. So I'll be selling my book. I think I'm speaking on stage. And then after that, I'll probably do one other one and then, uh, off to Europe, hopefully. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right, that will work. It sounds good. Uh, we'll uh, throw up your web throw your website out again. It's uh, uh, it's captainsandyon.com. There it goes, captainsandyon.com. <laughs> they can get yeah, the book. Think about it. They can check out your your merch, your bo order books. If they want to have you come speak somewhere, they could book you there. Yeah, uh, that's right. I so in fact, I got two big speaking deals coming up. I'm very excited about and. I love speaking because if I can help change someone's life, it's worth it. Of course, we all have to make money, and that's such a feel-good way. Mm -hmm. I love my job as a captain. Uh, I get to take people out to sea, and you know, hopefully, it's good weather, and they have yeah. the best experience ever. Um, and then, you know, pay it forward by showing crew members. But it's now I'm at that stage of my life. I'm turning 59 tomorrow. That I just want to do the next right thing and help people. Yeah along the way my journey of making money you know like mm -hmm. it's a it's a win-win right right okay all right okay well, uh, captain sandy man i appreciate you uh visiting with me and Thank filling you. me in on on what you got going on in the show and, and stuff like that and uh we'll keep an eye out on uh, what you got going on maybe you swing into dallas to a boat show one day and uh yes, and catch you there. i love dallas <laughs> i love dallas i got a lot of friends in dallas yep all right. All right. Well, Captain, I appreciate it, and uh, we'll see you down the road. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for having me. Thank you.